This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. It's thanks to their support that our videos like this and more are possible. We recreated our website using Squarespace and love using it. You can check out the link in the description. If you need a website yourself, get 10% off by going to squarespace.com slash make everything. In our last video, we had John give me some advice for making bug spray. But the main product he makes himself is actually soap. Earlier this year, I made over a dozen soaps myself in an attempt to dissect and understand the full process behind soap making. But my method was probably the most unnecessarily complicated way to actually make soap. So while we had John, I thought we'd bring back our practical series where we have an actual expert come and give useful advice in the event that you ever wanted to make it yourself. Hello, my name is John Hansen. I'm the owner of the Longfellow Soap Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I have been making soap for about eight years and I've had a business for about four years. I started with one wholesale account and I now have 18 and I have sold 40,000 bars of soap in the last three years. You're most likely not gonna lose a finger making soap. I lost this in a table saw accident. And also you're not gonna lose fingers if you accidentally get lye on them. It doesn't work that fast. So you can make a batch of soap in approximately two hours from the time you start lining your mold to the time that you pour the soap. So let's make some soap. Here's the equipment you'll need to make your own soap. You need two stainless steel pots, one six quart for heating the oil and mixing the soap, one four quart pot for mixing the lye and water. You need a stick blender for mixing the soap and the lye together. You need chemical resistant gloves for handling the lye so you don't burn your skin. You need an infrared thermometer for monitoring the temperature of the oil as you heat it and the lye as you cool it. Freezer paper to make a liner for the mold. You need a blanket to wrap the soap in while it's setting up so it cools slowly. You need a mold to pour the soap into so it has time to set up before you cut it. A level to make sure that the mold is level, otherwise the soap will be thicker on one end than the other. You can either use carpenter's framing squares or a ruler to mark the soap for cutting. You'll need knives for cutting. You need scissors and tape for putting the lining in the mold. And if you want to make a little fancier bar of soap and you want to have rippled edges, you can use a julienne vegetable cutter. The ingredients that you'll need to make soap. You'll need a three liter bottle of olive oil, lowest grade olive oil that you can get. You don't want to use virgin olive oil because it's more expensive and it's very dark in color so it will color your soap. I also use 15 ounces of avocado oil. You need 15 ounces of coconut oil. You need one bottle of lye, 16 ounces. For the soap I'm making tonight, I'm using lemongrass essential oil and I'm using grated lemon peel as an exfoliant. The recipe I'm going to be using is for nine pounds of soap. So a nine pound mold you need to have something that's roughly 12 by 24 and the interior dimensions will be 22 and a half by 10 and a half. You cannot pour the soap directly into the mold. It'll stick to the wood. You'll never get the soap out. So you need to put a liner in the mold. And I use freezer paper because it's plastic coated and the soap comes off very easily. The way most molds are made, the bottom is recessed. So the inside diameter here is the same as the mold. So you can make your liner using this and it will fit in your mold. You wanna pull the paper about two and a half inches beyond the end of the mold, because this is gonna form one end of the mold. You also wanna go another two and a half inches this way and you wanna cut it off with a scissors because the serrated edge on the box will most likely tear the paper. You wanna turn it over so that the plastic side is up because this is the side you'll be pouring the soap into. You wanna roll the paper up because it's too long to go lengthwise. You won't have room for the tape. So you need to roll it up and you need to cut off about two and a half inches, like so. You to start by folding one side. You wanna turn it around, push it against the edge of the mold and fold the other side. So you fold your two long sides and if it's not square, you want to square off the end. And then fold that over, because that's going to form the end of your liner. And then to come up with a square corner, fold this back on each side at 45 degrees. And when that opens up inside, you'll get a nice square corner. Fold the other side, and again, leave about 16th of an inch gap for expansion of the paper. Fold your 45 degrees, and generally this will be too long, so you're going to want to trim like this, flip the mold over, 
And you've got a liner that fits nicely inside your mold. And this is a special tape, masking tape, made by 3M. It's for concrete and stucco, so it's extremely sticky. And it sticks well because there's a lot of moisture inside the mold as the soap sets up. If you use regular masking tape, it probably will peel off the side of the mold. Your paper will cave in and you'll get big dents in your soap. So I recommend you get this stucco and cement tape. And I put three pieces on each end and five on each side to tape the liner in. Tape is in place. I'm going to tape it in the middle and then work to the outside. And because of that 45 degree angle, you get a nice square corner. And make sure that your liner is down tight against the bottom of the mold. Otherwise, you'll get ripples in the bottom of the soap. And now this is ready for pouring your soap. The next step is to pour your oils into your pan to get ready to heat them. This I measured ahead of time, 15 ounces of avocado oil, one jar of coconut oil. The coconut oil is normally solid at room temperature, so you do need to melt this. We're going to be making lemongrass soap with lemon exfoliate. So this is about a tablespoon of grated lemon peel. Once you've got all your oils measured, then you want to start heating it. You want to do it on a very low temperature. You don't want it to heat up too quickly. Now, while the oil is starting to heat, I'm going to mix the lye and the water together. You want to use either spring water, distilled water, or in the summertime, save your dehumidifier water. Tap water is not good because it has a trace chemical in it like chlorine or fluoride. Always put your water in the pan first. Always, always, always add the lye to the water so you don't get any splashing. The lye is readily available in hardware stores. It comes in a 16 ounce bottle. My recipe uses one bottle. So you want to pour that in slowly so it doesn't splash. And you want to stir it thoroughly. And you also, if you have it, you want to use a hood fan because the fumes are very noxious and will make you cough like crazy. If you don't have a fan that vents to the outside, you want to mix your lye outside your home. After about three to five minutes, the fumes will dissipate and it's safe to bring the lye back inside if you've taken it outside. Initially, the temperature of the lye will go up between 185 and 200 degrees, so it's extremely hot. The reason that lye gets so hot is when the water breaks the lye down, it releases almost all of its positive electrons in the form of heat and that's why it goes up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. When you mix the lye with the oil, the lye is trying to recapture those electrons from the oil, and that's how it breaks the oil apart and turns it into soap. And that's called saponification. Saponification takes place, and it's immediate, and it is then safe. The lye has been neutralized. The waiting period while it is curing is really just for the soap to dry out, for some of the moisture to come out of it. Once the fumes have dissipated and you've brought it back inside, if you've done it outside, you can put it in a water bath to cause it to cool more quickly. If you just cool it at room temperature, it could take an hour for the lye to get cool enough to use. When you're heating your oil, it's important to monitor the temperature because you want to bring it up slowly to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the lye reaches 100 degrees, you want to take it out of the water bath and you can bring it over to where your oil is waiting. You want to pour it in slowly so it doesn't splash and the lye will sink to the bottom of the pan. You want to use a stick blender to mix it. You can mix it by hand, but it takes so long to do that the soap may thicken up before you get done. And I mix it for about 45 seconds. That's long enough to make sure everything is thoroughly mixed and the saponification takes place. I do not bring my soap to trace because then when I pour it, it will self-level. If you take the soap to trace, it's so thick that it'll glop up in the middle of the mold and you'll have to spread it out with a spatula. Once that's mixed, you want to add your essential oil. And I mix that for about 15 seconds, just enough to get it throughout the soap. Once your soap is mixed, you can pour it into the mold. Start on one end and move slowly to the other. Put on the lid, cover with the blanket. The blanket keeps it warm while it's setting up so it doesn't cool too fast. Sometimes if the soap cools too fast, it will crack. And in 12 hours, it'll be ready to cut.
So after 12 hours, this is what your soap will look like. It's set up and firm enough to cut. Loosen all the tape, pull the pin out, open the front, pop out the soap. All right, start by peeling the corners first and then pull the paper down off the sides. So you wanna pull it over the edge of your counter or your table and peel. Make sure to support the soap so it doesn't break off. Starting from one end, I use this, it's called a carpenter square. And I mark in three inch intervals because a standard bar of soap is two inches by three inches. And then line up your marks and make a mark across the length of the block. Now most people will have a butcher knife like this in their kitchen. So you push that tip down, try and keep it perpendicular to the soap. Once you've made these larger blocks, then you can cut them into the three inch wide blocks. And use kind of a rocking motion to get through the soap. If you want to make fancy cuts, this is a Julian vegetable cutter. And then you want to measure in two inch intervals. And score where you're going to cut and then keep this as perpendicular as you can. And chop straight down. So once you've cut all your bars, they need to cure or dry out for three weeks. So you want to set them on a flat surface like a cookie sheet. And you want to put paper towels down before you set the soap. And then you want to lay your soap down with space between so the air can circulate. And you want to let them cure for three weeks. One week on one side, and then turn them over in two weeks on the second side. And in three weeks, your soap is ready to use. Thanks again to Squarespace for making this episode possible. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Create a beautiful website with their all-in-one platform, no coding experience required. They have a ton of templates to choose from, so you don't have to start your designs from scratch. Squarespace provides award-winning 24-7 customer support, and it's simple to set up or transfer an existing domain to Squarespace, so all your websites live in one place. We've been using Squarespace for a while now and really love how easy it is to use and how great our content looks on their platform. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash make everything to get 10% off of your first purchase. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.